All right. So you've sent us some uh, fascinating sources today. Yeah. All about Israel's recent strikes on Iran. And mm -hmm. and it's way more. It's a lot. Yes. Yeah, way more than just headlines and explosions. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're talking about a potential turning point in the Middle East. I think that's right. And I think one of the things that is really striking is the scale and the precision of this operation, you know? Oh, yeah. It's just a, a world away from the kind of indiscriminate missile barrages right. that we've seen in the past. Exactly. And one source really hammered that home for me. Over 100 Israeli jets. Wow. Including their top-of-the-line F-35s were involved. Yeah. These weren't just sorties across the border either. Right. We're talking about flights covering over 2,000 kilometers yeah. to hit targets deep inside Iran. That's incredible. Just the, the logistics and the operational you know. feat of that alone is just mind-boggling. It's like... You know, think about the planning, the coordination, yeah, yeah. the in-flight refueling, the electronic warfare that had to go on to evade detection. Oh, yeah. I mean, it speaks to a whole new level of capability totally. on Israel's part. It's like they lifted a page from a Tom Clancy novel. Yeah. But this is real life. Right. And what's even more remarkable is that despite all this... The strikes were incredibly focused. Yeah. They weren't about flattening entire cities. Right. But about surgically targeting key military installations. And that's, I think, where we start to see that there's a very deliberate strategy at play here. Yeah. You know, one source argues that that initial wave was all about crippling Iran's air defenses, mm. essentially taking away their ability to respond okay. quickly and decisively, like, like neutralizing their queen early on. Interesting. In a chess match. That makes sense. But I was also struck by the fact that Iran did scramble jets in response. Yeah. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, you know, I think it's a symbolic move for sure. I mean, they couldn't uh, just, you right. know, stand by and let Israel operate with impunity in their airspace. Why, well, of course. But I think it's also quite revealing the fact that they didn't or perhaps couldn't effectively engage those Israeli jets. Yeah. I think highlights the technological gap okay. that we're dealing with here. So we've got this incredible display of military might. Yeah. But the real question is, what's the end game here? Right. Is this just about sending a message mm. or is there a larger strategy at play? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Okay. You know, several sources point to kind of a shift in Israel's thinking here. Right. And they argue that this isn't just about containing Iran anymore. Uh -huh. It's about dismantling the regime while preserving the country's infrastructure. Wow. Almost like removing a tumor without harming the surrounding tissue. That's a pretty bold statement. Yeah. And it sounds like a pretty difficult balancing act. It is. I mean, are they really suggesting that they can engineer regime change from the outside? Well, it's definitely ambitious. Yeah. And there's, there's no guarantees of success. But one source describes it as a multi-phase strategy. Okay. So this initial strike is about degrading Iran's ability to project power right. and defend itself. And then the next stages could involve more targeted strikes against strategic assets, mm -hmm. further kind of weakening the regime's hold on power. So they're playing the long game here. I think they are. But wouldn't that risk escalating things further? Yeah. I mean... Iran isn't exactly known for backing down right. in the face of pressure. Yeah, that's the calculated gamble, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, right. Israel is betting that by demonstrating this overwhelming force right. and a very clear strategic objective, yeah. that they can achieve their goals without triggering a wider war. Okay. But the question, of course, is how will Iran respond? Right. And what will the international community do? Yeah. I mean, this is a high-stakes poker game, and the world is watching intently to see who blinks first. So far, we've been focusing on the military side of things, mm -hmm. but several sources also highlight the importance of the unseen battle. Right. The war of information and influence. Absolutely. That's happening alongside the airstrikes. Yeah. It's about shaping perceptions both within Iran and on the global stage. Mm -hmm. One source talked about Israel's efforts to expose the corruption and the brutality of the regime sure. to highlight the suffering of the Iranian people under their rule. So they're not just trying to break Iran militarily. Right. They're also trying to erode its legitimacy. Yeah. And encourage internal dissent. Exactly. They're aiming to create an environment where the regime becomes so unstable. Right. So unpopular that it collapses from within. Wow. It's a strategy that relies as much on psychological warfare as it does on bombs and missiles. It's a fascinating and complex situation. Yeah, absolutely. And it feels like we're just scratching the surface here. Yeah. But before we dive even deeper... Let's take a step back 
and consider the broader context. Okay. What does this all mean for the region? Right. And for the world? Well, one thing that jumps out at me is just the boldness of Israel's move. Yeah. I mean, they've essentially shattered the status quo in the Middle East, uh -huh. and it's going to have ripple effects far beyond Iran's borders. What kind of ripple effects are we talking about? Well, one obvious concern is the potential for escalation. Yeah. I mean, Iran has vowed revenge, and they have proxies throughout the region well, who would carry out attacks against Israeli or Western interests. So this could spiral into a broader conflict. It's certainly a risk. Okay. But it's not the only one. What else? We also need to think about how other major players like China and Russia right. will react. Of course. They both have close ties to Iran, uh -huh. and they're not going to sit idly by while Israel reshapes the regional order. This feels like we're on the brink of something big. Yeah. Something that could fundamentally alter the balance of power in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And beyond, and I think you're right, this is just the beginning. I think so, too. There's so much more to unpack here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it really is. It's like dropping a stone in a pond and watching the ripples spread out, except in this case, the pond is the entire Middle East. Yeah. And those ripples could reach as far as Beijing and Moscow. You mentioned China and Russia. Right. They're both key allies of Iran, mm -hmm. and they've condemned Israel's actions. But what are their options here? Right. Could they actually intervene militarily? Well, I mean, direct military intervention seems pretty unlikely. Okay. At least for now, both countries have their own strategic interests to consider. Uh -huh. You know, China is focused on economic expansion, securing its supply chains. Right. While Russia is already bogged down in Ukraine. Yeah. But that doesn't mean they'll stand by and do nothing. So one source suggested that China might increase its economic and military support for Iran. Right. Essentially trying to offset the damage caused by Israel's strikes. Yeah, that's a real possibility. I mean, China has already been deepening its ties with Iran. Right. And this could accelerate that trend. You know, they mm. provide financial aid. Uh -huh. Technology transfers, even advanced weaponry. Wow. It's a way for them to push back against what they see as Western aggression right. without getting directly involved in a military conflict. And what about Russia? They've been supplying Iran with drones and other military equipment. Could they step that up? It's certainly on the table. Yeah. I mean, Russia has a long history of supporting regimes that oppose the West. Yeah. And they see Iran as a valuable partner in challenging U.S. hegemony. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they could provide Iran with more sophisticated air defense systems, for example, or even fighter jets. That would be a major escalation. Wouldn't it? I mean, it would make it much harder for Israel to conduct future strikes. Absolutely. And that's why the situation is so yeah, delicate. Right. Any move by Russia or China to bolster Iran's military capabilities yeah. could provoke a strong response from Israel or the United States. OK. And so we could end up in a dangerous spiral of escalation with each side trying to outmaneuver the other. So we've got this complex geopolitical chess game playing out on one level. But there's also the human dimension, the impact on the people of Iran. Right. One source talked about the fear and uncertainty gripping the country, the sense that things are spiraling out of control. And it's easy to forget that real people are caught in the crossfire of these geopolitical struggles. Yeah. You know, their lives are being disrupted, their livelihoods threatened, mm -hmm. their futures uncertain, and the constant threat of violence hanging over their heads. Right. It takes a heavy toll on their mental and emotional well-being. Another source highlighted the economic consequences. Yeah. Iran's economy is already struggling under the weight of sanctions. Right. And these strikes are likely to exacerbate the situation. Right. Inflation is soaring. Basic goods are becoming scarce. Mm. And people are struggling to make ends meet. It's a recipe for social unrest. Yeah. You know, when people are desperate, when they feel like they have nothing left to lose, right. they're more likely to take to the streets and demand change. Of course. And that's something the Iranian regime fears more than anything. So while Israel might be trying to weaken the regime from the outside, yeah. it's possible that the real pressure for change could come from within Iran itself. Exactly. And that's the wild card in all of this. Yep. We can analyze the military strategies, the geopolitical maneuvers, the economic implications. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the outcome of this conflict will depend on the choices made by the Iranian people. Right. Will they continue to endure the hardships imposed by the regime, or will they demand a different future? It's a question that hangs over everything we've discussed so far, and it's a question that only the Iranian people can answer. Yeah, it feels like we're standing at a crossroads, you know, not just for Iran, but for the entire region. Yeah. 
One source described this as a potential turning point, mm -hmm. a moment where the old rules no longer apply. I think that's a powerful image, and it really does capture the the sense of uncertainty and also possibility right. that's hanging in the air. Yeah. You know, the Middle East has been in a state of flux for, for years now. Right. But this feels different. It's like the tectonic plates of geopolitics ah. are shifting beneath our feet. What do you think is driving this sense of change? Well... Is it solely about Israel's actions or are there larger forces at play? It's a combination of factors. Okay. But I think Israel's strikes have definitely acted as a catalyst, you know? Right. They've demonstrated a willingness to take decisive action, yeah. even if it means going against the wishes of the international community. Mm. And, and and I think that's emboldened other actors in the region. Okay. Those who are looking to also challenge the existing order. One source pointed to the growing assertiveness of the Gulf Arab states. Right. Particularly Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Yeah. They're no longer content to sit on the sidelines. They're not. They're forging new alliances, mm. investing in their militaries, and pursuing their own strategic interests. And they're not alone. I mean, we're seeing Turkey reasserting itself as a regional power. Right. Egypt flexing its muscles. Even smaller players like Qatar and Oman are making their voices heard. You know, it's a it's a multipolar Middle East now with no single dominant force. And that creates both opportunities and risks, right? Yes. On the one hand, it could lead to greater competition and instability. Yeah. But on the other hand, it could also open up space for new partnerships and solutions. Exactly. It's a much more fluid and unpredictable environment than we've seen in the past. Okay. And that means traditional alliances are being tested, old rivalries are resurfacing, mm. and, and new fault lines are emerging. One source talked about the potential for a realignment of the region with Israel finding common cause right. with some of its former Arab adversaries mm -hmm. against the shared threat of Iran. That's a fascinating possibility. And there are already signs of that happening, you know, behind the scenes. Real. The Abraham Accords were a major breakthrough, yeah. normalizing relations between Israel and several Arab states. And there's potential for that cooperation to expand, okay. particularly in areas like intelligence sharing, missile defense and counterterrorism. But that also raises questions about the role of the United States. Yeah. For decades, they've been the dominant external power in the Middle East. Right. But now with these shifting alliances and regional dynamics, is their influence waning? Well, that's a question that's being debated, you know, in think tanks and government offices around the world. I bet. Some argue that the U.S. is retrenching, that they're tired of being the world's policemen right. and are looking to disengage from the Middle East's intractable conflicts. And others believe that they're simply adapting to the new realities. Yeah. Shifting from a strategy of direct military intervention mm -hmm. to one of supporting regional partners and working through alliances. Precisely. And that's why it's so difficult to predict what the future holds. Yeah. There are so many variables at play, so many potential scenarios. Right. But one thing is clear, the Middle East is entering a new era, yeah. one that will be shaped by both internal dynamics and external forces. So we started this deep dive with Israel's strikes on Iran, and we've ended up exploring a whole range of geopolitical shifts and uncertainties. Yeah, it's been quite a journey. It has been a fascinating journey, and it's left me with more questions than answers. Well, and, and that's the nature of any good deep dive, right? I guess so. It's about peeling back the layers, revealing the complexities. Yeah. And acknowledging that there are no easy solutions. But I think the more we understand about the forces at play, yeah. the better equipped we are to navigate the challenges ahead. Right. The Middle East is a region in transition, yeah. and the world is watching to see what emerges from the crucible of change. Really interesting stuff. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. It's been a pleasure.